In this video, I will show you some shocking evidence about the political prisoners in this country, specifically someone named Brandon Fellows. I was not aware of this story myself until a couple of weeks ago. If there's one video I have made that you need to share, please share this one. Share it on social media because the mainstream media is not telling you about any of this. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when Dr. Fauci was testifying in front of Congress? Sitting behind Dr. Fauci was someone named Brandon Fellows. You could tell by the expressions on his face that he thought Dr. Fauci was saying a lot of nonsense. I was watching this live and I posted about it because I thought, this guy is thinking the same things I'm thinking, that Dr. Fauci's testimony is ridiculous. The news media lost their minds over this. There was a flood of news articles bashing Brandon Fellows saying, how dare this person make faces during Dr. Fauci's testimony? First of all, why is the news media more concerned with this Brandon person than the fact that Dr. Fauci is lying? Second, I thought that Brandon was actually being pretty self-controlled. If I was sitting there, and had to listen to Dr. Fauci spout his nonsense, I wouldn't be able to stop myself from bursting out laughing. So I think that Brandon was being more respectful than I would have been. You cannot expect people to go through life with no expression on their face. But what I found the most confusing was why the news media was running so many hit pieces over this random guy. Who is he? Even more confusing, how did this person have the ability to see through all the fake rhetoric in Washington, D.C.? It turns out that Brandon Fellows was released from prison a few weeks ago. He had been in prison for three years for his involvement for what happened at the Capitol three years ago in January. I cannot even say the name of the event or YouTube's going to suppress this video, but you know what I'm talking about. By the way, just as a side note, does anyone else find it strange that there is this one day that we cannot talk about? This is the same kind of thing they do in communist China for anyone who mentions the Tiananmen Square massacre. Why are we doing this in America? Since all of these news outlets were making this big fuss over Brandon Fellows, I decided to look into his case. What I found is going to shock you. So what did Brandon Fellows do? It turns out we have video, so we know exactly what he did. For him to spend three years in prison, it must be really terrible. This is the video that Brandon shot on his own cell phone where he approaches the police at the Capitol. Let's take a look. <laughs> So he is talking with the cop who tells him where the statues are. Brandon tells him, you're super cool. It's amazing how polite he is to these cops. Here is Brandon looking at the statues. What's up? turns to the cop and says, what's up? He looks at the statues and then he leaves the Capitol. Now, hold on a second. Am I missing something here? It looks to me like the cops let him in. There's apparently another video that was confiscated by the FBI that they won't let anyone see. In the video, Brandon asks a cop if he could be there, and the cop replies, No, you will not be arrested so long as you don't attack anyone, steal or break anything, or go into any areas that are locked or guarded, and follow the 6 p.m. curfew. 
Why won't the FBI let anyone see this video? That's suspicious. From the videos we do have, Brandon certainly wasn't threatening anyone. He was not doing anything violent. He was not trying to overthrow the government. He was walking around looking at statues. And this kid just spent three years in prison. So I thought, maybe I'm not understanding who this person is. Maybe he has a criminal past. So I looked into it. It turns out Brandon has a typical American upbringing. He grew up in a small town in upstate New York. He was a Christian camp counselor. He was captain of the wrestling team and in his free time coached wrestling for the younger kids. He started his own business caring for trees and repairing chimneys. It sounds like he's a pretty upstanding part of the community. Before the events that January, he had never been to a Trump rally. Okay, so he does not have a criminal past. I'm still confused. Is there something else I'm missing? Did he do something else that wasn't on the video? So I pulled up his official charges. Entering a restricted building, disorderly conduct, entering the Capitol, disorderly conduct in the Capitol. These are four charges over basically the same thing, trespassing at the Capitol. That's kind of strange because the Capitol is normally open to the public. It's usually a pretty high bar to charge someone with trespassing in a building that's normally open to the public. You saw the video. The cops gave him permission to be there. Brandon went up and asked the cops before he went further into the building. How did the government even bring these charges? It's not trespassing if the cops told him he could be there. So that is four charges against him that did not really happen. Here's an interview Brandon did last week with YouTuber Brianna Morello, where he gives a well-spoken explanation on how it is the government's responsibility to prove trespassing. Which is why with all my charges, which I'll name in a second, require the knowingly, you have a knowingly. Typically you've heard the thing of ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, that's not the case if you're arrested in the Capitol. They have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you knew that you were breaking the law and how they typically get past, past that threshold is by um, forcing the government to prove that you had give, been given a dispersal warning. Anytime historically that that hasn't happened, they have tossed the charges out, but not for us. For us, we had a DC jury that showed 84% of them shared uh, through research that they would find anybody with January 6th related charges guilty. And where 64% of the African-American community thought that we were actually there to kill black people, which is crazy. So we were not going into friendly territory. Um, and so in the jail, we were treated as, you know, these, these domestic terrorists for quite a long time. Here he makes a good point about the jury. The Constitution guarantees you a fair trial by a jury of your peers. If the D.C. juries are overwhelmingly one side politically, the case is supposed to be moved to a jurisdiction where Brandon can have an unbiased jury. Why can't the case just be tried in his hometown or any other jurisdiction where he can get an unbiased jury? Can someone please explain in the comments why this judge is not allowing a change of venue? So the first four charges are misdemeanors. Basically, that's the equivalent of a traffic ticket. Normally, when you get a ticket, you pay a fine and go home. But that's not what happened to Brandon Fellows. The prosecution added one more charge that is a felony, obstructing an official proceeding. Because of the felony charge, Brandon was arrested and put in prison for three years. He was just looking at statues. What is going on? I looked at the videos. It doesn't look like he was there trying to cause a problem. In fact, here's an interview from last week that Brandon did with a creator named Oreo Express. Brandon describes in his own words what he was thinking walking into the Capitol. It doesn't sound to me like he had any kind of corrupt intent to cause trouble. 
Nobody told me I was trespassing. It's called the People's House. And the election was stolen. I didn't think people were taking it back. I thought they simply, like, maybe I thought the cops were like, hey. I went through a whole series of thoughts as, I, as we were going in there. And I was like, okay, are they with us? What's going on? Uh, are, like, because I saw clearly people were taking selfies. They weren't really, you know, the, the, the party that loves guns was not going in there with, with guns and like, give us this building. You know, and people that are looking to insurrect don't follow a 6 p.m. curfew. So the 6 p.m. curfew, everybody's like, oh, hey, what are the Uber rides like around here? Yeah, like, oh, we want to make sure we're, we're out of here on time. What do you think? Do you think he went in there to try to disrupt an official proceeding? Or was this a good kid who was welcomed in by the cops and who thought he was participating in the political process? I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little frustrated with how Brandon was treated. In fact, just by the evidence I have shown you so far, this man is innocent of every charge against him. He's innocent and he was wrongly convicted and sent to prison for three years. I want to state this so that it is absolutely clear because we've all been brainwashed by the news media about what happened that day. I have to be honest. I was very skeptical when I started making this video. I thought there was so many news stories about Brandon that he must have done something wrong, but that's not what the evidence shows. I've gone through the evidence in Brandon's case something like 10 times to make sure I was seeing it correctly. Brandon Fellows is completely innocent. You saw the video evidence with your own eyes that proves it. He received permission from the police and he had no corrupt intent. That means he is innocent. He did not do any of the things they said he did. He did not trespass. He did not obstruct an official proceeding. But it gets more interesting. During Brandon Fellow's trial, someone from the NSA held secret meetings with the judge in Brandon's case. They were trying to request that they give Brandon additional charges. Why is the intelligence community trying to jail this guy? These communications by the judge are still being kept secret and we can never find out what they talked about. I'm pretty sure that's against the Constitution. Everyone is guaranteed a public trial. You cannot have a shadowy government agency trying to convict you over secret charges. What I find so outrageous was that during the trial, Brandon Fellows was being held in prison without bail. This is someone who was not violent, and there's no evidence that he did anything wrong. But the prosecutors asked the judge to hold him in prison before trial. They claimed that Brandon displayed extreme behavior. These are some of the examples they gave. When he was asked to get a job, he applied to the FBI, and the prosecutors found that to be sarcastic. During an initial Zoom hearing, Brandon wore sweatpants and ate breakfast during the call. The prosecutors felt Brandon was not taking them seriously. In one email, Brandon described one of the FBI agents as fat-necked. The prosecutors found this to be offensive. During one hearing, the prosecutors felt that Brandon was smirking and rolling his eyes. This sounds to me like they were getting all worked up over the same facial expressions we saw during the hearing with Dr. Fauci. Now, excuse me, but I don't think it's a crime to have an expressive face, especially when these prosecutors are acting like a fool. But that's not how the DC prosecutors saw it, and they threw him in prison. But it gets even crazier. The prosecutor came to Brandon with a deal three times. They would let him out of prison for time served if he pled guilty that he committed a felony. They also wanted him to say publicly that Donald Trump told him to do it. They wanted him to admit to something that never happened. Now, Brandon Fellows does not want to lie and plead guilty to something he didn't do. I have met few people in my life with the strength of character to do what Brandon did. They essentially held the jail door open for him and said, 
he could walk out of jail if he would just tell a lie. Come on, Brandon, just tell a lie. And because Brandon would not lie in court, they threw the book at him. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure what this prosecutor did was illegal. If someone knows the law, please comment down below if this prosecutor was breaking the law. Because it seems to me like this prosecutor should be in jail, not Brandon Fellows. Then Brandon's own defense attorney turned on him. Brandon did not have the money to hire some fancy attorney. So he got a public defender. And just like the jury, most of the public defenders in DC are Democrats. The public defender was trying to get Brandon to lie in court. Brandon ended up firing his own lawyer and he represented himself in his own trial. The judge criticized him for trying to represent himself. And Brandon said in court, I may be a fool to represent myself. I am nowhere near as big a fool as Joe Biden. Brandon Fellows lost his case and was sent to prison. When I hear about this case, I cannot believe how many examples there are of Brandon's rights being violated. As an American, you're supposed to have the right to a fair trial. Now, I don't care if you're Republican or you're Democrat. You have to admit that what happened to Brandon was not fair. He was looking at statues and he had his life destroyed. His bank account was canceled. He was banned from all social media. He lost access to his apps on Uber, Lyft, TikTok, and Facebook. But it gets worse. The conditions that this kid had to live through for the last three years have been horrible. They essentially tortured him in prison. They put him in solitary confinement. They took away his privileges because he would not take the vaccine. Here is Brandon talking about cutting his hair. Um, and it was there was no sunlight, no fruit. Was, you know, we literally had people getting scurvy, like what pirates got. No haircuts. You had to chemically burn your hair off if you wanted to uh, get a haircut with stuff called magic shave, which in red letter says don't use on head. But if you want to look human and you want to look not like a dangerous, you know, crazy man going into court where media is you know, trying to get trying to uh, get pictures or drawings of you, you want to look decent. And so you're like, all right, well, I guess I've got to burn it off and you got to pull it off as you do it. It's totally inhumane. You, oh, it's no family visits for two years. He had to pull his hair out. Here is Brandon talking about how they would not give him a toothbrush. Uh, in the jail, and let me let me sidetrack. Also, my teeth are normally whiter. Sorry, random random thing, but they didn't give me a toothbrush for long periods of time. So I apologize for my not as white teeth. But yeah, they will be fixed when I get this dentist appointment uh, brought up to par. But wanted to throw that in there. Uh, How long did they make him go without a toothbrush? These are basic human needs. Here's another story from Brandon that really shocked me. And I'm just in solitary praying and all of a sudden these <laughs> I get my discovery laptop and it has a camera on it. I guess they forgot to delete the camera on it. And so I'm like, whoa, I started recording my conditions. I'm like, all right, let's see them argue with this video evidence. And I showed some of my conditions that I was under, you know, not getting uh, those went viral quickly. Yeah, those went viral quickly. Yeah. Did you hear that? He prays after everything he's been through with all the unfair treatment he has never stopped believing in God. In fact, he prayed and God sent him a laptop with a camera, which he then used to reform the jail. This story is incredible. Let's take a look at the video he was able to sneak out of the jail with that camera. I don't know if I mentioned if it's my birthday, but it is. And I got my own version. I kid you not, man. I could not believe it. I got my own version of fireworks coming from my sink. It was the most disgusting uh, explosion I've ever seen in person. And I collected some samples. And I'm going to bring it in court and present it. But this is some. I don't know if you can make this out. But this is some of the fluid that shot out from that 
sync. This is not drugs, okay? These headphones, oh, this is a headphone case. Um, and look at this, bro. This is, I, I He is showing us what comes out of the faucet in his jail cell. Is that the water he has to drink? Because that's disgusting. These are unbelievable conditions. This is the reality. He has lived for three years for the crime of looking at statues. This is so unfair. How can you look at these videos and think this is right? Brandon is not the only person who is dealing with this. The Department of Justice has charged over 1,000 people with crimes for that day in January. How are we okay with doing this to our fellow Americans? The question we should be asking is how many times did the prosecutors try to coerce prisoners to sign plea deals for crimes they did not do? Keep in mind that in the last few years, we have seen a two-tiered justice system. On September 30th, 2023, Democrat Representative Jamal Bowman pulled a fire alarm at the Capitol in what appears to be an attempt to stop a vote in Congress. Jamal Bowman was charged with a misdemeanor and paid a $1,000 fine. Isn't that an example of actually obstructing an official proceeding? Why did Brandon Fellows go to prison and Jamal Bowman did not? On October 18th, 2023, Democrat Representative Rashida Tlaib urged on a protester group that occupied and shut down the Senate building to protest against Israel. Why weren't any of these people arrested for obstructing an official proceeding? On November 15th, 2023, a pro-Hamas protester punched a Capitol Police officer in the face. He received 48 hours of community service. Why did Brandon Fellows, who was nonviolent, receive three years? But what is even more crazy is that Brandon Fellows' case is currently one of the cases being discussed in front of the Supreme Court. 350 people received the same felony charge for obstructing an official proceeding. This has been criticized as being wrongly applied to over-aggressive prosecutions. If you look at the law 1512C2, it is actually written about evidence tampering. It's meant to apply to people altering evidence to obstruct an official proceeding. In fact, before the events at the Capitol, it had never been used to prosecute anyone for anything other than evidence tampering. So all these 350 cases, including Brandon Fellows, was using a novel and aggressive interpretation of the law. Two months ago, the Department of Justice argued in front of the Supreme Court that they should be allowed to interpret this law as covering any conduct, regardless of the fact that it's listed in a section of law about evidence tampering. The Department of Justice then wants to use this law to charge anyone with a felony that influences a proceeding in a way they don't like. The Supreme Court judges pushed back on this argument as being a little extreme. The attorney for the Department of Justice, Elizabeth Prelogar, argued that the Supreme Court doesn't have to worry because the Department of Justice only used this law when a high legal bar was met showing corrupt intent. Here's the audio from the Supreme Court of the judges questioning Elizabeth Prelogar. What, what does that mean? for the breadth of this statute. Um, would a sit-in that disrupts a trial or access to a federal courthouse qualify? Would a heckler in today's audience qualify or at the State of the Union address? Would pulling a fire alarm uh, um, before a vote qualify for 20 years in federal prison? 
there are multiple elements of the statute that I think might not be satisfied by those hypotheticals, and it relates to the point I was going to make to the Chief Justice about the breadth of this statute. And I want to emphasize, Justice Kagan, that this is a stringent mens rea requirement that has very much constrained the U.S. Attorney's Office. We've charged over 1,350 defendants with crimes committed on January 6th, but we've only had the uh, only had the evidence of intent to bring charges against 350 for a 1512. So how do you violation. make that decision? How do you decide which defendants get um, charged? under this statute as opposed to not? The dividing line has hinged usually on the evidence we have of intent. So we're looking for clear evidence that de the defendant knew about the proceedings that were happening in the joint session in Congress that day, clear knowledge of the official proceeding. We've looked for evidence that the defendant specifically intended to, to prevent Congress from certifying the vote and so used his actions to obstruct that proceeding. And then also, as I mentioned, the, the knowledge of wrongfulness or unlawful conduct can come about with respect to particular preparation that the defendants have made. She claims that all the 350 cases for the January protests met this high legal standard for corrupt intent. She's telling the Supreme Court that Brandon Fellows showed corrupt intent. Excuse me? I just showed you the video evidence from Brandon Fellows. That's your high standard? There's no evidence shown in that video that this Christian camp counselor had corrupt intent. In fact, it showed the police gave Brandon permission. Brandon Fellow's time in prison destroys the case against the Department of Justice. The evidence I have shown you proves the Department of Justice lied to the Supreme Court. You just heard audio of them lying. The fact that Brandon Fellows was abused by his prosecutor, was forced to represent himself, the fact that Brandon refused to accept a plea deal and was unfairly sent to prison for three years, the fact that the evidence shows he is completely innocent, all of it is the reason why the Supreme Court should rule against the Department of Justice. But unfortunately, the Supreme Court doesn't know about any of this. Brandon's case is just one of 350 cases. The Supreme Court is making their decision right now, and the judges have no idea the Department of Justice is lying to them. Here is the shocking part. We are weeks away from the Supreme Court announcing their decision in this case. If they decide to overturn these 350 cases, as they should, that means that Brandon Fellows just spent the last three years in prison being tortured for the equivalent of a traffic ticket. This is wrong. What are we doing? Whatever you think about what happened that day in January, enough is enough. These people have served their time. At this point, they are political prisoners, and it's wrong. Joe Biden needs to pardon them all. Let's send them home so they can be with their families. If you are a decent human being, you have to look at what happened to Brandon Fellows and admit that was not fair. Now, let me tell you about part of this case that I don't think anyone realizes. Remember the video I showed of Brandon Fellows inside the Capitol? He was standing in front of a statue. Does anyone recognize who this statue is? This is someone named Roger Sherman. Roger Sherman was a lawyer and one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. In fact, he was the only person to sign all four founding documents, the Continental Association, the Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation, and the United States Constitution. One of the things he said was, no laws bind the people, but such as they consent to be governed by. That is who Brandon went to see. I think what Brandon Fellows is showing us is what Roger Sherman said over 200 years ago, that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. And what is happening in Washington, D.C. is wrong. Now, Brandon has been out of prison for a few weeks. 
Here is Brandon talking about how he suffers from being unable to sleep. If you haven't been in these horrible conditions, it's it's hard to understand why you'd want some time to just just gotta like slowly get out. Of well, you mentioned even sleep. Yeah. So, I'm, like for instance, as an example, you know, first night I got I, I have seventy. They give you seventy two hours before you got to get back to your jurisdiction. So they forced me to come live in D.C. So I quickly grabbed an Amtrak train, flew, uh, rode up to go see my family up in the capital region. Um, and I got to sleep on a really, really soft bed, no barred bed, uh, with nice pillows and blankets. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to sleep good tonight. And I'm sitting there and hearing crickets and some, and a little bit of a stream in the back. And I'm like, I can't sleep. I, I, like, I got used to the screams. And it sounds ridiculous to anybody that hasn't been. I mean, it's just like, you're, you know, get used to the screams or you get used to just like, oh, the, there's no guards walking around jingling their keys. It's just, I don't know. I talked to my uncle who's been in the military for 20 years uh, just the other day. Um, and he said when he got back from deployments, he, he suffered similar things where he's like, oh, I could sleep through the explosions typically, but now it's too quiet. So he said, give it a couple weeks, maybe a max a month. But um, yeah, so. I'm worried about him. Let's do something to help Brandon out. This is a young man who just got out of prison after three years. He needs clothes. He needs food. He needs to start his whole life over again. If you want to help, he has a Give, Send, Go where you can donate. I'm going to include the link in the description down below. He posted this link on Twitter so we know it is legitimate. This is a page his mother set up to get him donations. Any amount you can give, I think would be a good investment to help him get back on his feet. And since money is involved, I have to give a disclaimer that I'm not getting any money to promote this, and I have no association with this Give, Send, Go account, other than I'm personally gonna go over there and give a donation. I'm just making this video because it's the right thing to do, and people need to know what is going on. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Thank you for watching.